All right, welcome back to the Getting to Know You videos. Uh, in this video, we're going to start talking about the basics of committing. So this is the first video where we actually dive into practical using, uh, practical usage of Git, actually. So one of the big caveats to this video is that you have Git installed on your computer. Um, how do you do that? I'm not going to cover that in this video series, unfortunately, unless there's big requests, I'll, I'll do it. Um, but you can just go to Google and just start searching, installing Git, right? Something like that. You'll find a couple of links to install on your computer. And the big thing to know if you've installed it properly is if you open up a terminal in Mac OS X or uh, in Windows, you'd open up your command line or your git bash. If you type git and hit enter, you should get a whole whack of uh, instructions about you know how to potentially use git. Um, if you type git and it says command not found or something like that, you haven't installed it properly, go back to square one and start all over. Um, no, honestly, figure out your way to install Git, and we can start on this video. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna start. We're gonna start start, blah, blah, start talking about the basics of committing. So, the way uh, this works is, like I said, we're all focusing on this repository. In other words, you're gonna set up a repository on your computer. Now, what is a repository? The best way to think of a, a Git repository is it's basically a folder on your computer that Git is gonna manage. So remember when I talked about the smarts of uh, source control, so being able to keep revisions, in other words, keep old versions of files, uh, the idea of branching, all of these smarts, right? Um, if you have a folder that has those smarts, that's essentially a repository. And you can basically turn any folder on your computer into a Git repository once you have Git installed. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, <clears throat> so here I am. Um, I'm sitting on some directory here, so slash users, slash kcle, dev, test kit. Um, so let's create a repository, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a regular folder. And now this could be a folder that you've already uh, been working on, but I'm gonna create a folder and I'm gonna call it um, my first uh, code, or my first piece of software. Super long file name, actually. All right, super long folder name. Okay, so if I look at the folder there, I have my first piece of software, it's in there. So let's just dive into that. Okay, so now we're sitting in my first piece of software. So if you want to tell Git to say, I wanna turn this folder into a repository, in other words, give that folder the smarts to be able to understand commits and revisions and all this stuff like that, all you have to do is type git init, okay? In other words, git initialize, right? Now make sure you're in the folder that you want git to manage, right? So if you created the folder up here, make sure you cd into that folder before you hit type git in it, right? So you're gonna be inside the folder. You hit git in it, and look at that. Initialize empty git repository, users, kcd, blah, 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 okay? So what you've essentially done there just by typing git in it is you told git that I'm gonna make this folder really smart. I'm gonna make this folder understand the idea of committing and all this stuff like that, all right? Now a really quick test if you wanna figure out that git in it worked is there's a hidden directory. Um, so if I do ls right now, you'll see there's no files or folders because it's an empty directory. But there is a hidden directory called uh, dot git. So if you do cd dot git, okay, and you hit ls, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff in there, right? This hidden folder, this dot git, this is where all the kind of temporary files and information that Git needs to use, um, that's where Git stores it actually. Um, so if you do cd.git and you see this folder, that means you've successfully turned your folder into a Git repository. So everything that I talked about, when you're keeping old versions, keeping revisions, all the stuff like that, Git actually does all that smart handling within here, okay? So let's just back out of that folder, go back to where we were. And now again, this folder is really smart, it has everything it needs, right? So that's the very first command, git init. That's what you want to do anytime you want to turn a folder into a git repository. Now remember, back to this kind of diagram, remember what I said, that everything we're doing is just on this computer. There's no concept of hooking up to a central server or anything like that, right? This is all being done on this computer, right? So again, everything I do from committing to adding all that stuff, remember, it's done on this computer. Okay. Before I go any further, I want to talk about three uh, areas uh, when you initialize a, a Git repository, all right? So when you initialize a Git repository, any file 
that's sitting in that folder will be basically one of three state one of three kind of states. It's either going to be an untracked file, okay, or it's going to sit in what's called the staging area, or it's just going to be committed into Git. All right. So these are three areas that you want to keep in mind as we go through this little tutorial. Okay. All right. So we've, we've initialized our Git repository, and what we want to do now is we want to add a file to our Git repository. In other words, we want to create a file, and then we want Git to we want to, we want to tell Git, look, I want you to track this file. In other words, I want you to um, you know if there's any changes made to the file, I want to know about those changes. If there's any um, anybody who wants to copy this file and do their own changes to it, I want all that information to be tracked about this file, right? So that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a file, okay? So I'm going to create a file using VI. Uh, for those who don't know what VI is, it's a text editor. It's like Notepad or uh, TextMate or TextEdit. It's just a it's just a uh, Note editor. If you're using a Bash again, you can probably just type in VI and be able to do what I want to do. So I'm just going to create a README file. Um, now, what VI does is if you type VI and then a file that doesn't exist, so this file doesn't exist right now, if I hit enter, it actually creates a brand new file for me. It's just like going to Notepad and hitting file new. That's all I'm doing right now, okay? So I'm going to hit, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, VI, if you hit I, the, the letter I itself, you'll see you, you enter insert mode. So what this is, this will allow you to type, okay? So if you get stuck here, by the way, just keep hitting escape and then hit I, and then you'll be here. All right, so this is the readme file. All right, so I'm gonna create a nice fancy readme file. Hopefully I'll spell readme correctly. And I'll say, this is the readme file for my wicked awesome Git repository, okay? And I'm just gonna hit escape, colon, WQ. All this means is I'm gonna pass it a command, writing and then quitting. So I've saved that file, right quit, okay? If you are not comfortable with VI, use Notepad, use TextEdit, I'm just creating a file. If I look in the finder here, and I go to users, uh, where am I, dev, test git, my first piece of software, all I've done is create a file, okay? So just create whatever file you want and slap it in there, okay? Now, this is a brand new file and Git doesn't know anything about it. So what it is, it's sitting in what we call the untracked files uh, uh, phase. In fact, if you type git status and hit enter, all right, so I type git status here, you'll see that, you can ignore this for now, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but you'll see here it says untracked files, readme.txt, all right? So git status is actually a really nice way to view any files that are sitting in the untracked phase or any files that are sitting in the staged phase, okay? So what we want to do is we want to tell Git to start tracking this file. In other words, we want to tell Git, this is a brand new file that I want you to have all the smarts around, okay? So the way we do that is we use the git add command, okay? And what git add requires you to specify is what file do you want me to track? So I'm going to say git add, and then I'm going to say readme.txt. If you want to be sure you're typing it in properly, you can just kind of type in the first couple letters and hit tab, and it'll fill it in for you. All right, so I hit git add readme.txt and then I'm done. Now what's happened is readme.txt went from an untracked file and now it's in what's called the staging area. It's sitting up here, okay? So if I hit git status, you'll see now changes to be committed, readme.txt, right? Before it was under untracked files, but now it's sitting in changes to be committed. So readme.txt is now sitting in the staged files area. Now what the staged area is, all it really means, okay, is that the next time I do a commit command, it's gonna take all those files, okay, all those files in the stage area, and it's gonna move them to the committed, uh, committed state, okay? So again, all the staged area is, is a kind of intermediary. It's kind of this in-between phase where it's say, okay, these are the files, you're gonna kind of put them in the ready area. Gonna put them in this ready staging area, and the next time you run a commit command, it's gonna grab all those files and commit them. Okay. So again, anytime you can just type git status. Git status is a nice uh, harmless command to see what's going on. So changes that are ready to be committed is readme.txt. Okay. Now I'll do git commit, 
Now what commit means is you're going to tell Git, I want to record this snapshot in time. In other words, I want to record the file in the state that it's in right now, okay? So readme.txt had all that text. Remember, this is my readme file from my Git repository. That state of the that state of the file, whenever I'm going to git commit, it's going to basically record that as a snapshot in time. Okay, it's going to record that as what we call a commit. Okay, when I run this command, so git commit dash m. What dash m means is you're going to pass it a comment. Okay, if you don't write dash m and you just write git commit, what it's going to do is it's going to open a text editor for you, and you kind of have to enter your comments in there. I find it way easier just to write dash m because you're going to pass in a comment, and then pass in a meaningful comment. In this case, this is the first time I'm ever committing this file, so I'm going to just write initial commit, enter. Now what's happened is the readme.file, the readme.txt has moved into the committed stage. In other words, it's now recorded in time. Okay, so now uh, the way that it looks, readme.txt, the way that it looks right now is that Git has a permanent version marked somewhere in uh, its kind of smart, uh, its smartness or whatever. Okay, so that means if I make any changes to readme.txt, it doesn't matter. Git will have this permanent version marked for me. Okay, and that's what Git commit does. So let's try that with another file just to kind of drive that home. Okay, so I'm going to create a new file called, um, let's say, uh, instructions dot text. Okay, so I'm going to write some instructions. These are the instructions. Okay, I'm going to save that. Now if I do a git status, again, git status shows you all the staged files and all the untracked files. So instructions dot text is unstaged. So what I'll do is I'll do a git add instruction dot text. That moves it up to the staged area, right? So if I do a git status again, You'll see, it's now ready to be committed. So ready to commit is that staged area. And then you do a git commit, initial commit of instructions, enter. And now it's in the committed area, okay? Git status won't tell you about uh, committed files because according to Git, the committed files are now recorded in history. We don't need to worry about them anymore. Right? It's only the ones that we haven't recorded in history yet that Git status will give you. Okay, so add a file, it becomes an untracked file. Then you do a git add to put it into the staged area. And then you do a git commit to commit that into the history of Git. Okay, so that's how that works. Now I want to stress one more time that all this is happening on my local computer in that folder. Okay, it's all happening within this my first piece of software folder. There's no idea of the central repository. It's all happening right here on my local computer. In fact, you can type git log, and it'll show you everything that you've committed. I did this initial commit here, and then after that, I did initial commit of instructions. That's all sitting on my local computer. All right, so that's the basics of committing. The next video I'll show you, uh, we'll do a little bit of um, more of this to just, just to play around with it.